So I told you matrix multiplication looks very ugly with subscripts. So let's write down that ugly, horrible formula with subscripts. Then we'll write it in a compact version that will look way nicer. And then we'll do some more examples. So here's our ugly matrix multiplication. Formula, well, it's really def definition. So we we'll use capital A, capital B, and now first matrix is filled with, and I'm using the minimum number of elements to establish a pattern. We did go through. Uh, the first row, you're in obviously your first row, so row one, and then your column is the second subscript, so that'll increase by one. So that's matrix A. Now the matrix, <clears throat> what is the dimensions of matrix A? How many rows? M rows by X or N columns. M by N. So the first dimension of B needs to equal the same. So I have to pair these two up or else I can't multiply. So those two have to match. Now I don't need any particular dimension after this. So we'll use the next letter in the alphabet. Or is it O? Don't use O, we'll go with P. O looks like zero. So our next matrix will be N by P. So it starts with not A11, this will be B11. What will the last term in the first row be? It'll be B1 what? P. B1P. Now we go down to the last row. We are in the, let's see, nth row, first column, and then BNP. All right, fun with some subscripts. Now our product matrix is gonna look even worse. So our upper left entry is going to be A11, B11, plus what would the next entry be in this sum? Well, I have to have a little more for a pattern here. What will the next term be? A what subscript? One. It'll be A12. So we're row one, column two, because I'm moving to the right in the A matrix. Now I'm moving downwards in the B matrix, so what B term will be multiplied here? Two, one. It'll be B21. We're going in row two, column one. So you could just partition first row, first column. That's what we're doing. We're going across first row, first column. Now I can write dot, dot, dot. So plus dot, dot, dot. What will the last term be? A what, what? A1N. So we get A1N, and then our B, we're going downwards, so it'll be BN1. Now do you see how the subscripts they're a little different, but the last one is N for both of those two. That's important, because if I did uh, M1, then N would need to equal M in order for them to be paired up like that. So here you can see that N is the number of elements you're adding together, right there. So that's the upper left entry. Now I want to partition this off from the other entries. Let's go with the next entry down. So now we'll be in row two, column one. So it's the exact same as what's above, except all your rows are going to be, uh-oh, that's a lie. Your A row is gonna be two, your B column is going to be two. So it'll be A21, B12. Plus, well, this one's easy, A22, B22, plus A2N, B, N, 2. 
All right, fun with subscripts. So here, I think that's enough to write dot, dot, dot. And then we'll just fill in the last one at the bottom. Actually, I want you to fill the last entry in. I'll do the first one. So it'll be AM1. And then, let's see, going across bottom row, first column, B. Uh-oh, I made a mistake in row two. And I didn't realize it until now. What's the row two mistake? What column did I use for the B terms in row two? I used column two. I should be using column one, because we're in column one. So all those B subscripts, they should be coming from column one. There we go. So we get AM1, B11, plus A, M2, B21, plus A, M, N, A, M, N, B, N1. All right, so that takes care of column one. Now move to column two. What is going to change in column two compared to column one? There's the difference. What is that difference going to be? So one of the subscripts is going to shift up by one. Which letter subscript and then which of those two so is A going to change or B going to change? So we'll do the row one, column two. So we're still in row one. A correspond, all those A terms came from row one. So the A terms are gonna be the same as they were previously. The B terms need to come from column two now. So we're going to take the B column. So they were one, one, one before, and those are gonna be two, two, two. So that's the difference. So I'll leave those circled. So write the proper entry in your matrix, but change all those ones out to twos. That'll put us the B terms in column two. So do that right now. I just finished that second column first row. Let's be lazy and start our dots here instead of that next entry. And then I want you to fill in column two's last entry there, column two, row M. So fill in column two, row M now. Any questions on that entry I have down there? I don't really want to read it off. All we changed, if you, let's see, if you're moving from the bottom row column one to the bottom row column two, you're just moving your B column up by one. So that's the pattern if you go that direction. And if you go from above to below, you are changing your row of A from one to M. So you can see the pattern happening either direction. 
Because of that, you should be able to write out the next entry to the right. You're just going to move the B column up by one each time you move over one more to the right. So your B column just goes up by one, by one, by one, etc. And then we're going to fill in the last entry or the last column, just the first and last row here. So we'll be dot, dot, dot in between. There's a whole bunch of stuff that goes in here, so we'll just do that diagonal dot. All right, do your best to fill in the last column, row one, and row M. So your column N here. That's your B uses column N. Your A doesn't change. Your A is still row one, and your other A will come from row M. So your A's don't change when you move over a new column. is column, is that right? Yes, so B is from column P. So A's are all the same. So our B's come from column P, so all those N's really should be P's. P, P, except the last N should be there, followed by a P. There we go. Obviously. All right, so questions on that row. So now fill in the last entry. So row P, column, oh, row, row M, column P. All right, so that's all you need to know for matrix multiplication. That's it. No problem. All right, so that's horrible. As I said, it would be. <clears throat> Let's look at the pattern that's happening. I'm going to use a highlighter to highlight things that are in common. What I'm doing is basically circling inner dimensions. So the inner dimensions of these all match right here. And they don't only match, they go up by one each time you move one to the right. So if we start here, that would be the first term, that's the second term, that's the nth term. So what we're going to do is summarize this with a summation. So I'm an upper left term is what I'm going to summarize with the summation. It's probably redundant to say those things, but we're going to use a summation here. So we have sigma. I need another letter. Usually we use I, J, or K, somewhere around there. So I'll just use the, let's go with I. So I is going to go from 1 to N. And we're going to add up A. Now, 
what is going to change is the second coordinate, the second subscript on A, and the first subscript on B. So those inner subscripts right there need to match and go up by one each time. So that's what I highlighted in that pattern up top. So any questions about that first upper left entry being this sigma summation? So that's our upper left. I'll probably need a little more height on this matrix to fit it all in. All right, we're gonna write the summation for, let's stick to column one. We're gonna go row two, column one. Now it's the same number of terms we're adding together. So I can use the same sigma from one to n, so it's still n terms. Now subscripts, all the a terms start with a subscript of two. So the first subscript for A is two, and the second subscript for A is the thing that increases by one each time. So that's where we're gonna fill in the I, A two I, and B is similar except B, the first subscript is increasing by one, so that's I one. So we'll fill in dots now, and then we'll do the last entry. And I want you to fill in the last entry. Here, it's still gonna be another sigma i equals one to n. So fill in the subscripts for a and b so that it works. I can't really zoom much further in and keep it all on the screen. But your notes should be more clear with that last entry. You can also look at the pattern just on what we wrote below because that pattern should be somewhat obvious also what's happening. So if I just look at the pattern in the second matrix, not looking back to the first one, the inner terms or the inner subscripts are I's and then the outer subscripts A is increasing by one. So what is the first A subscript here? So it should be in row M. So that'll be an M right there. The B is easier to see because it's I1, I1, I1. So it's gonna be I1. So we're still grabbing everything from column one. So it's B, I1. All right, so that is column one. Now we'll move to column two. Just do the first and the last from column two. The in-betweens we'll just write dot 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 and not worry about those. So just write the first and the last. You can either use the matrix above or you can just think about what's going to change when you move to column two. And remember B contains the column information not A. A contains the row information. First entry is A1I, BI2. And then the last entry is AMI, BI2. So the only thing that changed when we moved over is the subscript, the second sub subscript on B went up by one. So we're in column two. Now the pattern should be clear as we start moving to the right. The, subs the second subscript on B is gonna keep going up by one each time. So that's enough to write dot, dot, dot. And all we're gonna do now is fill in the last 
entry in the first row and the last entry in the last row. So those two entries, right, put those big circles or ovals. So that matrix is a little bit better. And again, the last column, the only thing that changes when we move to the right is our B column goes up. So we're maximum uh, column for B, which is column P. All right, last thing we're gonna do is write this super compactly. We're gonna write it as a single term right here. So, uh-oh, we got a problem. If I use IJ notation, I just use I's everywhere in my summations. So what I'm gonna switch to, oh uh, no, IJ. Let's just change our subscript to K. I know that's a pain, but that was a choice I made arbitrarily. So change all your I's to K's. Hopefully your I and K look similar enough. So every one of these can be summarized. They all have sum k equals one to n. So that's pretty clear right there. Now, <clears throat> this entry is gonna be row i, column j. That's what we mean right here, row i, column j. So what happens in row i, column j? So row i, that's gonna affect the a term. Column j is gonna affect the b term. So A is going from 1 to M. So this will be A, I, K. So the I stands for the row that we're in. So the A term is going to go across row I. And then B is going to go down column J. So B, the subscript is going to be K, J, like that. So that's the nice way to write it. So we had too much fun with subscripts, not enough time to do examples, so we'll do some multiplication examples tomorrow. You can't take the magnitude of a matrix. There'll be determinants where we'll get to soon when your matrix square you could technically say the, you could call the magnitude of a column or a row vector the, you could call that the magnitude if you wanted to, because a row vector or a column vector is, a row or a column matrix is a vector, so you could talk about the magnitude of a row or column matrix, but usually we would use the word vector if we wanted to talk about that property.